Welcome everybody. Um, it's really fantastic to have you here in today's webinar on Mahara 2004. And I'm really happy to be able to share this session with you in order to um, show you what new features Mahara 2004 has um, and give you some ideas that you might like to try out then once you're able to upgrade to that version. Before we go into the features itself, I'd like to give a massive thanks to everybody who's participated, contributed and um, engaged with this version to make it happen, uh, to get it ready um, to where we are at at the moment. And that is not just the development team, but that is a lot of other people as well. So of course, we always have our translators that are participating. We've had graphic designers, UX designers, business analysts working on it, system administrators who keep our infrastructure updated. Um, then also front-end developers, uh, testers, code reviewers, and also people giving support. And that is not just giving support um, in the project, but also at your own organizations, because then those ideas and um, issues that come up are being fed back to the project as well. And we'd also very much like to thank everybody who sponsored a feature and made the development um, happen for one or more features that made it into Mahara 2004. Um, in today's session, we are going to focus on some of the bigger, more visible features um, for people, as well as a few administrative features that I think might be of interest to a number of you, seeing that you've been using Mahara for many years um, and are at times also working at larger organizations where it might really be nice to look into automating some of the processes in getting people into the system and also especially giving them some roles. But let's start with the features that um, all of your account holders, all of your learners or staff members will see. So right now I'm logged in as just a regular learner. And um, what is possible now in Mahara 2004 is to switch between languages very easily. In the past, if you're Mahara instance has multiple languages installed, you would need to go to the account preferences and then find the language that you wanted to change into, select it, go out, and then if you wanted to change it back, it was the same procedure all over again. Now, this is much more comfortable these days in Mahara 2004 because you can just go to the language chooser in the top right hand corner where the rest of the main navigation areas are and switch the language over to the one that you want to see the interface in. Um, and that is just really with a click of a button, the interface changes. We are not there yet to also translate all of your text immediately. So that is a completely different kettle of fish, um, but at least the interface is changed. Um, so you see everything in your preferred language and can then also switch back very quickly in order to um, change things around depending on your context. So this is a really, really nice feature um, for those on large instances that do work in a multilingual context, allowing people the freedom to switch languages very quickly. Now, Staying with larger organizations, um, when you share a portfolio, then there can be a lot of people on your instance um, to look for and um, find them. And um, of course, it has always been possible to search for those people um, when you're sharing a portfolio so that you can search for a person and then just type in their name. However, if you have multiple organizations using one Mahada site, that list can be quite long and there might actually also be quite a few double apps so that you have lots of change methods or Dan Daniela Millers or um, other names like that that were popular in particular um, time. 
And so one of the features that um, White and Matadi HB, who's also joined us today um, with Miriam and Tabitha has developed um, is that you see the people that are in your own organization first. So here you can see I'm a member of the institution school. And so I'm seeing everybody who is also a member in that institution first before I'm go getting to people from other organizations. And that will also help um, when searching for a person so that with the search, then only those people come up first before others are being displayed, making that a really nice way of very quickly finding those people that you're more likely to share a portfolio with. Looking into some other efficiencies that we've made for Mahara 2004, um, we are always looking into, well, how can we improve the, the usability of Mahara? How can we make it easier for people to find their way around to get to the information that they need? And one of the features um, that we were able to implement thanks to funding um, from a Swiss um, university is the filter by labels. So what you're used to at the moment is you see all your groups and some of you here in, um, in today's webinar have been around Mata for quite a long time. And so I suspect you will have a ton of groups that you can then see here on your all my groups screen and also have um, to the right hand side in your sidebar and then also see on your profile picture um, on your profile page. Now, um, there's the, the question, of course, well, how can we manage groups better? Because um, old semester groups um, might need to stay there for archiving purposes or lifelong learning purposes. And you don't really want to remove yourself because then you lose the access to it. Well, that is where now the labels come in. So they are kind of like tags, but we can't call them tags because we already have tags. And so we, we call them um, personal group labels so that it is now possible for you to decide for yourself, nobody else can see them, um, what you'd like to label that group with um, in order to find it more easily later on. The functionality is very similar to the text. You start typing a word. If it already exists, you can select it. If it doesn't exist, you can create that label. And then the label is added to your group labels. Now, if you say, I want to see all the groups that have been labeled with Aotearoa, then you can also kind of say add more labels to groups um, and click the label and your list of groups will automatically be filtered for that label. Um, and if you go away to a different page and then come back to the groups, the filter will still be applied so that you can really have a permanent filter for a semester or for a year or for a particular um, course or activities. Or if you're in training and only want to show particular groups, then you can filter your entire list of groups. But this functionality is not only limited to that groups overview screen, but you can also deal with it here in the sidebar. Um, right now, the the labels, of course, they are the same for the groups that are already shown there. So let's add a, another group to that label. And you can, as you can see, you can have as many labels as you like. And you can also filter for combination of labels. So if you want to show all the groups uh, in Aotearoa and 2020, then you can have those together. We are using a Boolean OR in order to have a wider selection. And if you want to narrow it down, then you can have a very specific label. But now let's get this here into the sidebar. So that is in the preferences where you can not only now select um, whether you want to have it in an alphabetical list or um, last joined, but also which groups of which label you want to see in that sidebar. And then it is, then it is changed immediately. And the third place where you can um, filter your groups is on your profile page. Because there we also have the possibility to show groups 
and similarly to the sidebar and to the groups overview page just select the one label or the multiple labels that you would like to only display groups of on your profile page for other people. Um, one other really nice feature I find in Mahada 2004 is the cover images. So if you are looking at a normal Mahada pages and collections overview page, you kind of see the tiles that we've had now for quite a while already to, um, to come to a more modern design and um, where you can see the portfolios that you have and read all the actions. What you can do now is upload images for that um, so that the tile actually has more um, yeah, has a visual representation and I'll show that to you by going to a particular page and then adding an image in the settings of the page. So under the advanced options, you now have the possibility to have a cover image. It's very easily uploaded um, from your computer or also directly um, if you already have some images on your site, you can use them. We recommend that the size is 180 pixels by 130 um, because the image really just needs to be very small. And um, smaller images means the page is getting to be loaded faster. And when you then go back to your pages and collections over your page, you see the pages with the cover images. And you can also add cover images, of course, to a collection. So this was a feature that kind of got into Mahara 2004 last minute. And we are happy that we could um, still put it in there and make it available. So also, if you want to have a cover image for a collection, go right ahead and have it there. So that had been on our wish list for a very long time already. And so we are really happy to have been able to make it happen. So now if you have a description, then you can hover over the tile and the description is overlaid so that you're not uh, losing it and can still read it. With that functionality, now, of course, we have other possibilities uh, that we can look into, namely using that same layout, for example, on the latest pages that are latest changes you can view or when you're viewing a list of portfolios. Um, one idea that the client had also already floated was um, doing the same thing for group home pages so that you can add a cover image to a group and then see the groups displayed um, with the help of the cover images rather than just in a very long list. So lots and lots of possibilities to go from here now, um, which will be fantastic to bring more visualizations into Mahara and um, have those displayed. You might have already just now seen that when we were on the files to upload screen, um, that there was a restriction displayed, namely that um, it is now possible to say which file types can only be uploaded to Mahara to prevent that some people kind of upload nefarious content that shouldn't be on the site. So this is a setting that cannot be changed um, by a site administrator that does need to be changed by a system administrator who has access to the configuration file um, so that they are not accidentally quick changes that um, shouldn't be made. And then wherever you try to upload a file that uh, does not conform to one of those extensions, you're not able to. We've kind of been in the, or looking at the groups earlier. So let's take another quick look at them. Because if we are at an um, organization that works a lot with groups, you may not really like the setup of the groups that we have um, and say, well, 
my default group settings should be looking something different. And in the past, we always altered the database for that uh, for a particular client and kind of done it more the manual way. However, this time around, we did have the opportunity to um, actually put that into an interface in Mahara in order to make it easier for everybody in the future. And so what you can now set as site administrator is group default settings, um, where you can change the membership, um, where you can make all sorts of changes, pretty much anything that you can see on the group screen um, can be changed. We are putting the editability dates in there um, shortly. So that's the only thing that is missing as well as a description because description and title of the group usually do need to be set manually. So those are not there. But other than that, um, anything can be changed here in that group screen. So that when you then set up a new group, be that as an administrator or as a regular um, learner, then those settings will have been made so that it is on open, friend invitations are set instead of recommendations, and the other change that I've made was um, set it away from groups can only be created by administrators to everyone except ordinary members. So this is really nice if you need to set up groups in bulk um, at the start of a semester, for example, and you say, I just really want to have all of them to have the same, um, same settings. And um, you do that either or set up those groups manually or via web services. In a CSV file, you already have a lot of those controls included, um, but sometimes CSV files are not the best way or the way that an organization wants to set up those groups. And also then going forward um, throughout the term, you can have those default settings um, available rather than always needing to instruct your group administrators to make certain changes away from the default. Um, so those features that we've just looked at um, are ones that a person can see very easily on the site and that really have to deal with improvements for um, for people using portfolios needing fewer instructions. Now we are entering an area um, where we've made changes to how an external authentication method can interact with Mahara more conveniently and also more, more easily for that matter. And um, so the, the next things I'm going to show you are in relation to single sign-on via SAML-based authentication methods, um, because that is a really nice way of outsourcing a number of processes just to that authentication method. So the first thing we are going to look at is kind of still sticking with personal features rather than an organization-wide feature, is that um, you now have the possibility to move an account into a SAML-based institution very easily. This, of course, um, assumes that you are on a multi-tenanted Mahara instance, meaning that ma um, many institutions, or at least, in, at least two, um, share a Mahara site, and that there can then be some movement between those two institutions. So right now I'm in one institution here, and um, I'm going to move and want to move my account without needing to get in touch with my uh, site administrator or institution administrator and asking them to remove me from the institution. Then I can be invited into the other one. Then they need to um, do their part and I need to confirm it. And that is kind of a lot of admin um, that needs to be done. So switch portfolio in Switzerland. Um, asked us to look into making a change there, making it more convenient for people to move their accounts. And so now that is a possibility because when you go to the move accounts page and you are on a site where there are multiple institutions and at least one of them has SAML based authentication, then um, you can select that institution and send a request off uh, to be added there. And so now, of course, what we need to make sure of is that all the regular 
um, regular measures are being taken that security is a given that the the person is informed whose email address you are using and whose account you're logging into that you're wanting to move your account and therefore part of the process is that you do need to authenticate in that authentication method where you want to move to that is available on that institution and that then an email is being dispatched to the primary email address um, of your current account so the one that you are using to make you aware of, yep, somebody requested that um, your account is being moved into another institution. And then if you do want to do that, you have 30 minutes time to click that link and complete that action. If you don't, then nothing happens. Um, if the email doesn't come on time or is in the spam folder and can't be seen on time, then um, you can just start that process again. And so once all of that is completed, the account very smoothly moves over into the other institution without needing to um, ask any administrators to do so. Because with an external authentication method, we always assume that um, the people that are, that are in that auth uh, that are allowed to use that authentication method um, are also then allowed in that institution. Before we actually get to that point, though, um, if you do have SAML on your uh, Mahara site, um, in the past, you always had this very small single sign on button. Let me just show you an example of that um, on a multi-tenanted site um, where there are lots and lots of different organizations that you have your normal login field and then very tiny, the single sign on button. However, if you are on a Mahara instance where SAML is the predominant um, authentication method, which then will typically be the case um, if you're using it for organizational purposes, we've switched it around. And again, this feature has been, uh, is one of those features where we've done all those things uh, manually in the past um, via customization, but now had the opportunity to actually put it directly into Mahara. Um, making it more permanent and making it easier for people to set up. Um, because that button can then also display the institution uh, short name. Um, a second button can appear as well. So if you have two primary single sign on um, authentication methods, they are easily reachable. Otherwise, there'll be the option to then go to a page where the respective authentication method can be selected. But yet at the same time, the admin login, um, where you can use a regular username and password, especially if you're not having a um, single sign on account is available. Now, if there's an org, org institute, um, Mahara site that kind of needs both, then of course also the language strings can be changed as usual um, to not just say that it is for administration purposes. But we are not stopping there with all the uh, single sign on enhancements, but taking a closer look also at um, some that we haven't yet quite seen. And um, that is that typically when you had a Mahara instance, and you wanted to give your teachers uh, or staff members the opportunity to set up groups with submissions um, or to yeah, set up different permissions in groups um, that are reserved for staff members or automatically make somebody an, an institution administrator, you couldn't. You always had to wait until they created their account or their account was created for them and only then be able to give them the added permissions. Now that has changed um, because it is possible to say automatically if you have SAML based authentication or use the SAML authentication plugin, which can also be used with ADFS, um, Azure AD and others, is that you can immediately say if a person has a particular role in our authentication method, they'll automatically become site administrator, site staff, institution administrator, or institution staff. Um, 
It can also be further restricted to a role prefix. Um, so if you have a huge catalog, tons of organizations in there, then further restrictions can be made. And then at the bottom, we have another very interesting um, role, the auto group administration, um, which allows the um, which allows a person or multiple people to be automatically added to every single group created within the institution and they cannot be removed. So this can be of particular interest um, if you need to have a support person across all the groups that are in the institution that you have um, or if, you, if it's a compliance thing that you do need to have somebody in the group uh, from the organization. These people cannot be removed and they are also automatically subscribed to all forum posts. It is also possible, um, as you can see with the, with the feature right below, the auto group administration of all groups on the site to even set up that role to be, the group, um, to be an administrator in all the groups on the site. But it's in particular nice if you do have a um, if you do have a normal institution and an alumni institution, then you do not have to set that up um, separately, but can use um, set that up only in one authentication method directly. The one thing that I can't really easily show you at the moment um, is the possibility to automatically set up institutions. So imagine there is a huge um, authentication or there's a huge organization that has lots of sub organizations um, or faculties institutes and they should all have their own instant or their their own institution in Mahara then um, that can be achieved because it'll be possible through information that is in single sign on to then automatically create those institutions um, when a person who has who is a member of that institution um, logs in for the first time. So lots and lots of automation that has been going on um, that we are making available here. So that's kind of all the SAML features and in my excitement to, to show them all to you, what I've completely missed though is to show you one last feature um, that is more base or that is more of interest to individuals. And that is the export. Now, oftentimes we don't really look at the export much because people should be ideally having their lifelong portfolio on the site and working with that also across institution boundaries. Um, keep it not just during their formal education years, but also beyond. But sometimes it's just necessary to make a backup or to export it into another instance of Mahara. And so in the past, we've always recommended people make an export um, in HTML and also in Leap2A. Leap2A allows people to import their Mahara portfolio back into another Mahara site. Now, kind of by always saying, well, you should be making both. The question is begged. Why don't you just combine the export? And that's kind of what we've done in this version of Mahara, uh, that you can now just say, I want to export my data, whether it's everything in your account or just some of your pages and collections and not have to worry about, is it HTML that I want or is it Leap2A that I want, but just generate the export. So it's kind of thing going through, um, creating the export files. But we didn't quite stop there. As you can see on the screen here, we are also creating PDFs. Um, PDF export is an experimental feature in Mahara 2004 um, that people can use and try out on their own sites. And what happens there is then that your export is all in one big zip archive because the leap to a export as well as the HTML export as well as the PDF export all need to have the files available that are still sitting in your account. 
So it kind of makes sense to, if you want to import a portfolio then back into Mahara to just upload the entire file. And if there's a lead to a XML file included, Mahara knows, ah, yep, this is now what I can import. It grabs the stuff from the export info folder where all the files live and um, ignores the HTML and the PDF files. Whereas if you want to go with an HTML export, then um, you can open up all of that and click the index HTML. Or if you prefer to look at your PDF, then your PDF files are also available. So now the difference between this PDF and the print to PDF option that has already been on Mahara Pages for quite a while is that in this PDF, all the artifacts come along. So those are the ones that are then sitting in that export information. Um, so that if you do want to watch a video or do want to listen to an audio file or open it, open another PDF that is within the portfolio page, then you can find that in the export info and it is still available, still accessible. Whereas if you export a page just from, from the page itself, um, you can still highlight everything. However, you do lose that rich content because none of the files are um, exported because you are just creating a flat print. So that's why we are kind of putting the PDF export in. Um, it is an experimental feature at this stage because it's a huge feature. Um, there's been lots and lots of changes. Um, in order to use it, special software needs to be installed on the server. Um, and to facilitate the PDF generation. And um, there are lots of moving pieces and um, that's why we do want to make it available to people to give it a go, try it out um, and give us feedback. However, we do also want to let people know that um, there are still a few things that would need to be sorted out um, before we can kind of make it an official um, official feature and we are also still working on improving that feature altogether. Now one change that you might have already seen is up here that we are not saying search for users anymore but search for people and also in the navigation menus um, users have vanished. We are only looking at people. Um, because we think it is time that we do talk about people and not users, because in English, um, the word user does have a, quite a negative connotation at times. And therefore we wanted to make sure that we are not kind of perpetuating that. So instead of saying users, we now have people, group members, account holders, which is kind of more neutral, neutral term when we do need to be a bit more technical, uh, portfolio authors and institution members. In certain areas, in particular the administration, there might be the occasional users still lurking around, um, especially when they are third party integrations, um, because those other softwares, they still, uh, they still use the term and therefore we can't completely rewrite everything um, because otherwise it would be more difficult um, to then communicate back to that project or see where things are at. But for the most part um, on what your learners, your staff members um, and your community will see is people. Um, and we are also looking into kind of phasing out the term from our own language um, so that we, we are looking into just having people around in Mahara. Now, besides all these features that I've um, now shown you, there are many, many more. Um, for example, if you're working with peer assessments um, and, uh, a, and sign offs and a portfolio author has already signed off the page without actually the peer adding something, there will be an alert. When you look at sign off details, you see directly um, when a page was signed off by whom and who made the verification and lots and lots of other small changes um, and also bug fixes that you can find in Mahara 2004. 
These, of course, are all documented on the Mahara manual um, where you can find them. And there is also a short version of the highlights in the feature video if you um, just like to get a quick look and or a refresher of how to find something and um, therefore have access to that um, over there. And as usual, you can download and install Mahara um, on your own servers um, and uh, work with it there, upgrade your existing site or have a support company sup um, help you with that. Now with the release of Mahara 2004 and 20 stands for 2020 and 04 for April. So it is our April 2020 release. Mahara 18.10 falls out of support. It doesn't receive any security updates anymore. Therefore, we do encourage everybody to upgrade to one of the still supported versions. However, we do also acknowledge that not everybody will be able to do that immediately. And that's why over the last few months, we've been thinking about um, an additional service offering that we can make for community members who are not able to move as quickly. And that is the extended security support. So once a version of Mahara falls out of support, which is after a year and a half, um, if you like, you can purchase the premium service for the extended security support, which will continue supporting your Mahara instance um, with security updates for an additional two and a half years. And as you can see, kind of that is also moving moving target with the other version. So 19.04 will uh, go out of support in October this year, but if you do need to stay longer on it and you do want to receive security updates when we make them available for Mahara, for the supported versions of Mahara, then you can um, be on the premium support in order to have that extended security support. And if you have any questions for this or anything else Mahara related, uh, please do feel free to contact me, send me an email, give me a call or um, write in the Mahara forums. And I look forward to talking with you. But now we do still have um, time for your questions right here. So I'll briefly stop my screen share and see where your questions are at. And if needed, we can go back into the screen share. So there weren't any questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of people who said bye and- Yeah, needed to go to another to, meeting. <laughs> I didn't even have a chance to say bye back before they vanished, so. Yeah, no, that is fine. Um, those that are here, do you have any questions, comments? Um, doesn't even have to be for Mahara 20 or 4, can be for, um, for anything else uh, Mahara related. Yes, Christina, sure. I was trying to follow you by looking at my platform, my Mahara platform as you're going through and, and mine's quite different because I think it's an institution based one yep. um, and I don't have much access to change. It, when does the upgrade happen with Mahara or has it already happened? Um, Simon, for that, please have a talk with Stephen. Okay. Um, because the okay. University of Waikato handles its Mahara site on its own. And so he, he would know when it will be possible to schedule the upgrade in and um, then make all of those features available to you. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, Thank because you. that is not handled centrally by, by us at the Mahara project. Um, but okay. everybody who has their own Mahara site will um, do an upgrade and will also schedule an upgrade um, for when it is convenient. And then if their site is managed by a support company, then it is a conversation with the support company. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's easy. Yeah. I have no more questions, but okay. it's, it's some interesting changes. So thank you for presenting them. I appreciate that. Um, which changes did you like in particular? That's a question for everybody here, still here in the room. I, I just feel like it's more accessible for the way in which I use it for some of my students. Mm -hmm. they, they seem, I think they'll have more control over what they do with their portfolio and how they how they can download some of the stuff that they need to for registration, that sort of mm. thing. It, it just makes that aspect much easier for them, I think. 
Yeah, especially I think that the PDF in that regard will be very useful yeah. when you do need to hand in kind of more, more the traditional PDF file for the registration board. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I personally quite like the um, pictures in the tiles feature because I'm a yeah. very visual person. Mm -hmm. But definitely for our organization, the um, export and especially that experimental PDF export, mm -hmm. I think. Um, people will quite like because just to keep a, their own personal copy yeah. of their portfolios. And uh, Miriam, it is it is right that oftentimes the PDF is still more accessible and easier to, to comprehend for people than the HTML and therefore quicker to see. Um, with the uh, um, cover images, what I hadn't mentioned yet was that you can set those cover images directly also on the institution or site level when you're creating templates. So you can set those really nicely for all the templates that you're having for the nurses um, in order for them not having to do that on their own. Yeah. Uh, do you have any other questions? Um, Rajneel, your microphone is not on. Not yet. Um, you might need to click the, the mute button in in uh, Big Blue Button again. Christina, I'm going to duck out now, but thank you very much. I'll go and see Thanks you for later. coming along, Simon. Look forward to talking okay. to you. Bye. Okay, good to see you again. Bye. Nice seeing you too. Tabitha is also trying to talk and she is having trouble being heard. Oh, okay. Um, so um, she's Pressing the unmute yeah. button. <laughs> oh yeah, I can see that she has um, that her microphone is on. Yeah, yeah, but she's like, "Can't you hear me?" And I'm like, "Nope." <laughs> we did hear her earlier. Um, so we did the... earlier. So she yeah. did try asking because she asked me a question mm -hmm. in the in Messenger because um, she tried asking it verbally and was. Yeah. confused that she wasn't heard um, and I answered it there but I'll answer it here because it might be useful for other people mm -hmm. is um, uh, she asked does she mean an individual user can add a label to a group not the admin of the group just a member and I said yes it's your personal way yeah. of organizing your groups yep and that was and a very said, that's very cool <laughs> yeah and that was a very deliberate decision um, because everybody has a different way of organizing things and um, is, is in different different groups, different number of groups, and therefore it wasn't really possible to make that an organizational way um, be because then we would have come to, to very big restrictions again. And so PH Burn said, nope, this is personal labels. We want to be able to organize it however we like it. And so I th see there's lots of really nice flexibility in there. Um, to make that list shorter for every single semester. Yeah. She's also mentioned a few yeah. things in chat. chat. Uh, yeah, and of yeah. course, obviously, you, you like all the new features that you've been um, helping us put in. That is definitely true. I like those as well. Um, and I look forward to putting the remaining ones in then into Mahara 2010. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, definitely using um, big pictures on the tiles for the levels of practice so that mm. we have yet another way of making sure that people are grabbing the correct portfolio collection yeah although um, are those visible on the search they're not are they no not yet so that would be something really cool that we can then work more with those tiles instead of just having those lists displayed that we display those in in the more tile format um, in order to have those not just for you personally, for your own organization, but also visible to others. And then because it would be it would be nice to be able to differentiate between searching for pages and searching for collections, because mm. currently you search just for pages and you get all the pages you search for collections. Well, we when we search, when we go to the copy button on our pages and collections yeah. thing and we type something into search it comes up with all of the pages that have got that in the title and the top result has copy collection but mm. every single one of them has copy page 
Yep, that, that is a remnant from, from older days, so that screen definitely needs improving um, yeah. to make that a bit easier. Um, yeah, so certainly something else to look into then. Um, yeah. just, just seeing question from Rajneel in there. Um, oh, yeah. So we have Moodle Mahara integration and Moodle is the entry point. Is there an easy way to add members to uh, members to groups or, or add members? Um, yes, there are easier ways um, because with Moodle and Mahara, you can use web services. And therefore, if you if a person is or if an account is created in Moodle, then that can trigger an event which automatically then also creates the account in Mahara. And if you enroll a student into a course in Moodle, that can then also trigger an event to create that course in Mahara as a group and also enroll that student into the group. And if that student is removed from the course, then it get, uh, that student gets, out, gets also removed from the group in Mahara. And same thing also for adding people to institutions, um, because then that can be done via web services or um, more easily if you don't want to use additional web services via LTI, um, because with LTI, it is possible to now differentiate or to be able to connect one Moodle instance to multiple institutions on the same Mahara instance. And yes, Tabitha, uh, Tabitha PDF for moderation purposes. Um, so that you could send the PDF to external moderation body, which doesn't mean we need to hold the portfolio without releasing grades, nor would we need to share for long periods with the external party. Yes. And they would then also automatically have a copy of it that they could keep. And if there were somebody who did need to have it um, run through Turnitin or Ukun, for example, they could also just upload the PDF file and didn't have to worry about all the artifacts that are coming with it because those are disregarded anyway. Mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, lots of possibilities there for the PDF. Um, to make to then continue further development on it and um, get it to a full fledged feature in Mahara. Yeah. Well, thank you, Christina. Well, thank you, everybody. <laughs> um, I'm just going to stop the recording now. Okay.